Today we're going to graph piecewise functions, and literally, piecewise functions are pieces of graphs. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as, as we continue. So what I want to do is I want to graph the line y equals 2, but I only want to graph it when x is greater than or equal to 5. We know y equals 2 is a horizontal line that goes across this region right here. But if I say I only want x to equal 5 or more than 5, so I start at 5 and I go up to 2, and I can put a closed circle here because on my graph I know 5 is included and the y value has to be 2, and then y equals 2 greater than 5 moves to the right forever. So we'll put a little arrow there and go. So this is only a piece of this y equals 2 graph, and the key is when x is greater than or equal to 5. If x were strictly greater than 5, I'd put an open circle here. So that's probably our easiest example. Let's move to the next. So now you can see piecewise functions can have several different pieces to them, if you will. So what we're looking at is we're looking at a y equals graph that equals 3 when x is less than or equal to 4 that equals negative 5 when x is less than or greater than 4, sorry, and less than 6, and equals 2 when x is greater than or equal to 6. One more time, let me make clarification that these are our x values and these are our y values. So I'm going to move over to 4 and I'm going to go up to 3, put a dot, because it's equal to. And then I'm going to graph the horizontal line y equals 3, but when x is less than or equal to 4. So there's that graph going on forever. And then at 4, I'm going to go down to 5, but I can't include it because it says when x is greater than 4, y equals negative 5. And I'm going to continue to graph that graph when it's greater than 4 but less than 6. Well, here's 6, but it's not included, so I'll open circle that, and then I'll connect these two dots where x, or I'm sorry, where y is less than 5. Finally, I go to 6, and this time I'm going to go up to 2 and include it because it says x is greater than or equal to 6. And I'm going to graph y equals 2 to the right because that's when x is greater than or equal to 6. So I have three partial graphs based on these x values. These are going to start getting a little bit tougher now. So now you'll notice we don't just have constants for my y equals, we actually have equations of lines. So again, these are all y equals, these are all when x equals. So we want to graph y equals 2x plus 5 when x is less than 1. Well, here is 1, and I need to graph y equals 2x plus 5. I don't know what the y value of that is, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in 1 to this equation. So I have 2 times 1 plus 5, which is equal to 7. So at 1, this graph would equal 7, but I can't make it equal to 7 because it's strictly less than. So I go over 1, up to 7, and open circle. Now, since this is a line, I know the slope of this line is a positive 2, but I'm not allowed to go up 2 and over to the right 1 because it says this graph can only be graphed when x is less than 1. So another way to do that positive slope is go down to back 1. And you'll notice where I end up, I end up actually at the y-intercept, which is 5. I could have done that from the first place. But I'm going to go down to back 1, down to back 1, connect the dots, and draw my graph. And it goes forever. Now, this is something we've already done. When x is 1, y is 1. And it's a horizontal line moving to the right until I get to 3. 
at 3. I also have a value of 1, and I'm going to connect the dots. Notice both filled in circles because equal to. Finally, we're going to look at what happens when x is equal to 3. Well, when x equals to 3, this graph has a calculated value of 3. So I move over to 3, go up 3, and I have to give an open circle again because this is strictly greater than. Now the problem on this is I can't go to 6 and graph, even though that's the y-intercept, because x has got to be greater than 3 and the numbers over here are less than 3. So what I need to do now is use my slope, which in this case m is equal to negative 1. And I go down one to the right one, down one to the right one, and that's my graph. Continuing, now we only have two graphs, but we both have slope intercepts. And again, we're going to use the same kind of process. We know these are x's, these are y's. This x is strictly less than. And to find my y value, I'm going to plug the 6 into this function. So I have 2 thirds times 6 plus 4. 2 thirds times 6 is 4 plus 4, or 8. So at 6, I have a y value of 8, but I can't include it. So I'll go up to 6 and 8. Now from here, since I can go to the left, I can use my y-intercept of 4. I might as well just draw the two points, and I know the two points determine a line, so I can connect the dots. And that's my line. In this graph here, again, I want to find out what's happening at 6. So I plug 6 in. I have negative half times 6 plus 5. This is going to equal to negative 3 plus 5, which is 2. So once again, at 6, I'm going to go up to 2. And I can include that dot because I'm equals 2 this time. And I will... Since I can't go to the left and use the y-intercept of 5, I'm going to use the slope in this case, where m is equal to negative 1 half, and go down 1 over 2, and then start the graph. This is going to get more complicated now because we have an absolute value graph in here. But we'll still start the same way. And since this is a line, I want to find out what's happening at 2. So I take and plug the 2 in. I get negative 1 out. I notice that this cannot be included, so I go over to 2, down 1, put an open circle. And in this case, my y-intercept is 3. So I'm going to go up to 3. Connect the dots, a little arrow, and now I move on to this next graph. Now, on this graph, there's a couple ways to do it. Right? One thing we can do is, and what I would suggest doing, is identifying, because we've talked about how to graph these, H, K, and M. M, H, and K. M in this case is a slope, which is outside, so it's 1. H is in the interior, and it follows the subtraction sign, so that's 8. And K is on the outside, which is 0. So in this case, we know our translation is 8 over, 0 down. So this is where the vertex of this absolute value graph lies. Right? So I'm going to go over to 8, 0, put an open circle, notice. Nothing's included on this one, right? And then, what do I do with this two thing? Well, I know how to graph absolute value. It has a pattern. And the x and y is a 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, negative 1, 1, negative 2, 2. 
And I could graph that from here. So over one, up one, over two, up two, over one, up one, over two, up two. But you'll notice just by doing that small pattern, I don't finish my graph off. So what I might want to do is I might want to find out what's happening to that graph at an x value of 2. So if I plug 2 into this graph, I have the absolute value of 2 minus 8, which is equal to 6. So at 2, I go up to 6, put an open circle, and finish connecting these dots. And there's my graph. So now we're going to transition a little bit. Rather than graphing these, we're going to take and actually write the values of each of these parts of the function. And you'll notice what I've done over here. And this, this is not going to necessarily be here when you do this work. You're going to have to develop this on your own. But I've listed where my graphs exist. So this graph goes to the left, which means it exists when x is greater than or equal to negative 3. Greater than or equal because I have the filled in dot. This graph exists when x is greater than negative 2, notice the open circle, and less than or equal to 2 because I have a closed circle. And then this last graph exists when x is greater than 4. So now, this is a horizontal line. and We should know the equation of horizontal lines. They're just a constant. And where is that y value existing? At negative 1. So that's my first equation. Now you'll notice in the second graph, we have a line. Unfortunately, it has a y-intercept, and we can calculate a slope. So if I look at my y-intercept, I have a y-intercept of 1, and I have a slope of up to over 2, which is a slope of 1. So that's 1x plus 1. So far this has been pretty easy. Now on this last graph, there's a lot of ways to get this done. Here's what I prefer doing. I look at this point and notice, hey, I've got a slope of up to over 1. So I have a slope of 2. But I don't have a y-intercept. Now what I could do, and I don't recommend it, is go down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, until I get to the y-intercept. I think it's just easier to say, all right, well, look, I know this has some y equals 2x plus b equation. And I know a point on this line, all right? The point on this line is moving over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this right here is the point 5, 10. And I know if I want to write the equation of a line passing through this point and having the slope, I just plug in the point 5, 10. And you'll notice when I solve this, B ends up equaling zero. So my y-intercept is zero, and therefore well, I can put plus in it, but I don't really have to. My equation is y equals 2x. And here is your piecewise function. All this must be included. Let's do another one. So here's one a little bit different than the last in that everything's connected. Now, if this is a function, then at this point, I have to pass a vertical line test. So what that means is either this is an absolute value function, which it's not, because it's not the same on both sides. Notice, down 2 over 3. If I go down 2 over 3, I get right to this point. All right, so this is not a symmetric graph. Therefore, it's made up of two lines. Right. And in these two lines, we have one dot here. I can't have two equals then because that won't be a function. 
So what I'm going to have to do is say at three, one of these graphs is less than, and one of these graphs is greater than or equal to. So what's going to happen is one dot is open and one dot fills in that open circle. Right? Now I'm going to have to determine the equation of these lines. This one's easy because it goes right through a y-intercept, and I can calculate a point. So I'm going to do the one that's going to the less than distance of 3, or to the left of 3. So this is some y equals. My y-intercept is 3, and I can get my slope by going up 2 over 3. So I have two-thirds x is my slope, and that's my equation. So this one, if I notice, this goes through another point as well. I can find my slope. And my slope in this case is down 3 over 2. But I don't know my y-intercept. And again, I don't recommend trying to count and get there, because sometimes you're not going to get to a nice spot. So I go to my calculation and say, well, here's the point 5, 2, and I need to plug that into this equation. So let's go ahead and do that. I have y equals negative 3 over 2x plus b. Plug the point 5, 2 in. Here's 2 for the y, 5 for the x. And you'll notice this doesn't reduce nicely, so I'm going to have a fraction that I have to deal with. Here's 2 equals negative 15 over 2 plus b. I can get a common denominator of 2, so this is 4 over 2 equals negative 15 over 2 plus b. And b ends up equaling 19 halves. And there's my piecewise function. So lastly, I've left kind of the easiest for last. They tell us what our piecewise function is, and they want us to evaluate f of 5 and f of 7. So this is kind of function notation. So we know that function notation means that this is my x value, and they want me to find my y. And this is my x value, and they want me to find my y. The question is, which of these three equations do I plug into? Well, I want to plug in when x is equal to 5. Notice, in this equation right here, I can certainly plug in a 5, but it wouldn't be correct because it says this part of the graph or function only exists when x is less than 5, and I'm at x equals 5. This is where x equals 5. So I plug my 5 into the second equation. Therefore, I have x squared, which I'm plugging into for this, or 5 squared, which equals 25. And that's where I have the value of f of 5. For f of negative 7, notice negative 7 is less than negative 5. So that's where I'm going to plug this value into. So I can say f of negative 7 equals 3 minus 2 times negative 7, which in this case ends up equaling 17. That's all we've got on our piecewise functions. Make sure you fill out the summary and do your connected problems for lesson 11.